This last year on eBay, I sold $207,856. How much of that did I actually profit? How's it going guys? Today I'm gonna to talk about my yearly sales as a full-time eBay reseller. It was the best year yet. I did have some help, but I'm gonna break down all the numbers for you guys. I have a couple categories here. The main ones, you know, cost of goods, total sales, obviously, shipping, things like that. But then I have some other ones that I wanted to add in that I think a lot of people leave out. So you guys can get like a full understanding of like what the expenses are going into this. And I hope you guys enjoy. So before we get started, we're going to pull some items. We had about 15 sales. Um, I've been packing items all week. This is over the New Year's break. So it's like four days of sales. Um, I've already packed up about 70 or so. And then there's like 15 here for $349. Yeah, there's two of them that I want to speak on or three. And then we're going to go into the, the numbers in details, which... You know, everyone's always excited about, and I kind of want to just preface that, you know, I have been doing this for a number of years. I went full time in June 2021, and I started reselling in the fall of 2019. So don't try to like uh, compare your numbers too closely. I just want to give you an idea of like what is possible for somebody who is putting full time hours in this. And I also have a part time employee who works 10 to 12 hours a week, and we're going to break down like a little bit of her expense there too, so you guys can get an idea. And yeah, let's just jump into these and pull a couple items so I can uh, get this packed up, get to the post office so they can scan all my stuff, and then we can talk about how much money I actually made this last year reselling on eBay. All right, so the first item I want to talk about is this RLX short sleeve polo. Now, RLX is Ralph Lauren's like kind of like performance line and this one had the new tags with it you know but it was embroidered somebody sent it to a shop to get embroidered so it wasn't truly new because you know someone had altered it now i took an offer of 20 dollars plus 899 shipping that's not that much money for a new with tags rlx however i noticed from my numbers that you know when i pushed volume and i accepted whatever profit was there that made up the majority of my sales a lot of my sales came from me sending out offers and offers coming to me. So that's kind of something I noticed. And another thing I really noticed was my category shifted a lot. I had started as an everything seller back when 2019, early 2020, but I switched to clothing and I did a lot of jeans and shoes and I've switched to mainly like men's tops. That's polos, long sleeve button ups and anything that's a top for men. So there's money in all categories in the thrift stores. My reason for changing is because you can fit more of the shirts in these boxes rather than a bunch of jeans or a bunch of shoes. All right, so this is a pullover. This is a quarter zip with the hood, I believe. Yeah, so this is a hooded quarter zip. Now this is from Huck. Huck is like a performance fishing line. Just kind of saw about uh, this brand being good this year. I don't know when it came out exactly, but um, almost anything I've bought in this brand has sold. All right, these two items here, they paid five dollars thirty cents plus eight nine nine shipping and then the other one i think it was like six dollars and some change so he gets the shipping discount meaning it's eight ninety nine for the first item and then two ninety nine for any item after that i think if you do the continual five percent off for um you know like a percentage of your store every single day then eventually the prices will get so low to like five dollars plus your shipping and then have your stack shipping uh, multiplier which actually makes you money on the shipping you're gonna end up getting some deals. It just may take a little longer than expected. These are just your standard Wranglers. Um, these you know, are a little different. This has a corduroy collar, it's more of a flannel, and then this one has elbow patches, I believe. So, same buyer bought both though, really like that. And the last item I wanna talk about, uh, it's a jacket. And I put a lot of the jackets I buy in this closet. So, we'll jump over there and talk about the numbers. What are you doing in the office, Ragnar? It's been a while since they've seen you. This is my dog, Ragnar. He's a menace. Ragnar, sit. Sit. That's pretty good, bud. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, back in the office. And the last item I want to talk to you guys is going to be this uh, dry back. This is a jacket. So it's D-R-Y-B-A-K. And this has got like... I guess like an otter on it, I don't know. Anyway, this is like a heavy duty canvas jacket. It's for like hunting. It was full of stains. It has like black marks all over it. Kind of um, 
you know, beat up a little bit, but this sold for $45 plus $8.99 shipping. Really good sale. Uh, I got it at an estate sale. You can usually find like some really cool jackets at estate sales. Excellent pickup here. And to pack it, I'm going to use a poly mailer. And if you guys didn't know, 2023 was the year of gyro pack. Gyro pack is the poly mailer company that I've been working with. So they have different colored poly mailers. And if you use Taylor 10, you can get 10% off your first order. What I really like about gyro packs colored poly mailers is whenever you go to the post office, everyone has white. Uh, you know envelopes white poly mailers and then the the green or the blue like the purple the different colors that gyro pack provides you're gonna stick out a little bit at the post office now I made a couple uh, shorts and TikToks about gyro pack and people said oh I work at the post office and it's all the same to me well I guarantee you in the back of your mind you're gonna notice like a bunch of green packages like I bring you know anywhere from 20 to 100 packages to the post office at any given time so they absolutely notice and I think Gyro Pack's doing a really good job. I'm gonna stick with them until I find the next person that's better, but so far, we're sticking with Gyro Pack. So go get your order now today, 10% off, use code TAYLOR10. This last year on eBay, I sold $207,856. All right, so for that top line number, 207,856, we have to subtract quite a bit of things. now. That's like your top line revenue, and it's an impressive number, but I would never tell somebody that I made $200,000 this year. I would never do it. Like, say I was with my wife's friends, I wouldn't say, yeah, I made that much money. I sold that much, but I did not make that much. So I do not say I'm a six-figure reseller because I have yet to crack six figures profit, but I'm going to explain to you how much I did make and what all we had to pay for. Taxes collected by eBay. $10,674. That's what they pull out from the buyers in the different states and the tax rates and all that stuff. So luckily we don't have to pay for that. Um, we don't have to do the work to figure that out on our own because trust me, it would be pretty difficult and annoying to do. But eBay does that for us and that's part of the reason why eBay is such a great platform. They do quite a bit of stuff for you. But that will leave us with $197,182. So still pretty high number. A big chunk, this is the biggest expense that comes out of uh, my business, is selling cost. So this is going to be your eBay fees and it's going to be your shipping labels. They bunch these together and mine was $72,548. That's a lot. Now this year on eBay, we sold a little less items than last year, 9,159 items. Still a pretty good number. I like that 10,000 as a number to hit. I've yet to reach that, but that is a goal of mine. Selling fees after that and the labels, it's going to leave us with $124,634. So we are still over a hundred grand, which is nice, but we also have another shipping fee to pay for, and that's from Pirate Ship. So if you use third-party shipping, eBay's not going to calculate how much you spent on Pirate Ship. So you have to include that number as well. And mine for this year was $1,378. Definitely less than years past because I'm not an everything seller currently. There are some items that I sell outside of clothing, but typically your pirate ship number will be high if you um, find that you you know get cheaper labels that way. But definitely have to include pirate ship labels, so that was uh, you know a little over a thousand dollars, leaving us with a hundred and twenty three thousand two hundred fifty six bucks. All right, cost of goods now. Cost of goods, I've been telling you guys I spend $4 and I try to profit 7 This year, I actually ended up spending a little more per item after all the numbers have been broken down. For cost of goods here, I have $44,837. Now, that is all that was swiped on my credit card at thrift stores across you know, the country pretty much, but mainly in Texas, some in Oklahoma. After cost of goods, we're left with $78,419. So there also is another cost of goods that I have to add in here, and that's ATM withdrawals. So ATM withdrawals is anytime I go to a garage sale, an estate sale, or in my office that I kind of promote as a store in my town, it's a um, place where people can bring their clothes and I'll buy it out. Pretty much like a buy, sell, trade store, except I'm just buying the clothes. So that amount was $4,306 because I used a couple ATMs that weren't like for my bank, I had to use that twice, and that was like $3 charges, but uh, that leaves us with $74,113. $4,300 on those expenses, that's actually you know a little higher than I thought because I don't go to a lot of garage sales, 
Um, but maybe some of the buy sell trade deals were a little bigger than I remember, or possibly um, I pulled out too much for a garage sale, and then instead of like, you know, saving it and you know, I pretty much burnt that money on a couple things, which is most likely going to be uh, bonuses for my employee. I would sometimes give her weekly bonuses, and then I gave her holiday bonuses. So that's where some of that money is. And then also, if I went on a travel uh, to source or whatever, sometimes I would use that cash instead of swiping my card. So that's uh, a little bit gray on like the ATM withdrawals, but I definitely kept that money for the business. I did not use it for like personal stuff. So that is an expense though that I want to keep like a closer eye on because, you know, you want to make sure that uh, ideally you could swipe your credit card at like garage sales, but you know, you may have to use some form of uh, online, you know, Zelle or things like that uh, just to keep it a little cleaner. But, you know, maybe you just need to like uh, earmark your, your money a little bit better, you know, when it comes to like ATM withdrawals because on the tax stuff on QuickBooks, it just says uh, ATM withdrawal and you don't really know exactly like what you spent it on, so. All right, next, we have another pretty big expense. This is going to be my part-time employee, Randy. So she has been working uh, part-time for uh, the majority of the year last year. I think she came on in April. And she works anywhere from five hours a week all the way up to 12 hours a week. And I paid her $4,526. That has been an extremely good expense, mainly because with that $4,526 I've spent on her through the year, she has been able to knock out all my photos, processing, meaning like separating the clothes that needs to be washed, and then um, she stores it in inventory. So she's photographing, storing in inventory, processing. Uh, that includes detagging, buttoning up the shirts, things like that. And with that time that I've gained back, I've been able to grow this YouTube channel. So uh, I've been able to grow YouTube, and then I'm also doing uh, influence videos for uh, companies, uh, products, and things like that to make affiliate income as well. So that's been really great, but after her expense, it's going to leave us with $69,587. So with Randy, uh, I realized that like having her work behind me in this room, it was just a little bit tight, a little bit too close. Um, I felt like she needed like a bigger space. And then I also wanted to like try to have more of those buy, sell, trade deals uh, in my town because we do not have one of those stores and I felt like I could fill that need. Instead of getting like a full-blown retail store to do that, I decided to get an office downtown that I tell people is like a store that they can come bring their clothes and I'll pay cash for it. So that was $1,800 in rent. Pretty cheap, that was a six month lease and I'm actually extended it um, into this next year and I hope to kind of like expand that aspect because some of those buy sell trade deals have been some of the best pickups of the year. In addition to having that space, I also bought internet. It was $390 for internet. I recently cut that off because I wasn't using the internet there. When I first got the space, I was actually like doing listings there and like treating it as a workplace. But then I realized I didn't want to have to go there if I didn't want to go there. So now I go there every now and then. I don't go there every day. And that also kind of hurts having people like understand like, hey, we're open here, but it's not quite in like a retail strip. It's more of like in a business district. So people um, are still kind of understanding what the place is and it's mainly by appointment when people come in. So uh, $390 for internet, that leaves us with $67,397. So pretty good income for a year, right? And the thing about it is, yeah, it's full time, but I also run like the YouTube channel. I also run the affiliate stuff. So I'm not spending, I couldn't break down exactly how many hours it is. It, it might be close to 40. It could be closer to like 32 maybe. However, the money I've spent on the space and um, my part-time employee, I've pretty much made that money in other ways. And then it's only going to get bigger, hopefully, this next year. So it was it was a pretty big chunk, a pretty big expense, but uh, it left us with sixty-seven thousand. Now there's a couple other expenses that I'm going to add in there um, that I know a lot of people probably don't. So one is uh, CPA plus QuickBook expenses. Now for me that was one thousand three hundred fifty-one dollars. I don't know exactly what QuickBooks is. I think it was like twenty-five bucks a month, or maybe like I think it was thirty-one bucks a month. And then my CPA. It's a little harder to uh, pin down exactly because I run an S corporation and with an S corporation, there are certain papers that need to be filed. There are certain things as far as like them doing payroll for myself, meaning like I am paying myself out of this you know, money that I make as an employee for my business. So there's filing fees that I think it's like 95 a month or no, 90, 95 a quarter is what they charge me. 
So that's what close to 400 bucks the year. And then also they run the end of the year taxes and they run my wife's taxes. So those are all expenses. And then anytime like a form needs to be filed with the state, it's like 50 bucks. And you know, I could do that myself or they could do it, but I typically just have them do it. And it really $1,351 for a, you know, 20, 30 year experienced uh, CPA, well worth it in my opinion, especially when you're dealing with all these numbers, because I know people ask like, well, that's, um, you know, you're at 60 something thousand for the year, but what about taxes? Well, I'm going to tell you, I really don't pay as much in taxes. I do throughout the year, but a lot of that comes back to me because I have a CPA and because they understand, uh, how to get, um, you know, how to pay the correct amount of taxes. Let's just put it that way. And then last, oh, that, that, before I go on to the very last expense, that leaves us with $66,046 for the year. Now, the very last expense is to all the naysayers out there that, um, all the, all the other resellers out there talking about their income, probably not going to include this, but I know a few people do, uh, gas. People ask all the time, well, what about gas? Well, let me tell you, I moved off of my F-150 truck because it actually had some issues, uh, last year. But this year I've had the Honda Civic hatchback. I did a lot of research in picking this vehicle. One, it gets 34 miles to the gallon. Ideally, I would have got like, you know, like a hybrid electric vehicle, but uh, the market was really bad whenever I bought the vehicle. So this is the best thing I could find for what I was able to pay. Brand new vehicle and the gas. It was $1,560. The reason I put that in there is because I source out of town for my inventory. I have to drive two hours to Dallas to get to inventory, two hours, 15 minutes to Oklahoma City. I'm right in the middle of that area and it, it it's an expense. It's pretty much a full tank of gas every single week. And that leaves us with a grand total of $64,486 full-time reselling clothes on eBay. Whatever you want to say about it, it's $207,000 in sales. It's 64,000, you know, almost 500 bucks in uh, profit. That's before taxes, of course. Now, that's a small percentage, but when you're dealing with volume, when you're dealing with clothes, that's what happens. Now, the other thing I can say is um, my systems are pretty smooth. Like, it's not a headache to pack up items. I pretty much put everything in poly bags by gyro pack. We talked about that earlier. I um, have somebody who does the processing, and guess what? It's really easy to tell Randy, hey, this is how you do it. It's pretty much the same all the time because we only have so many different styles of clothing that she photographs. Another couple numbers I have here is the average sales price for the year it was only $22.69, but that is, um, that's pretty good. It's up 9% from last year, meaning I did better with the types of clothing that I was purchasing. And that's a really huge thing. Ideally, you want to see that average price per item go up and then everything else kind of like go up with it. One thing we have is cost of goods. Now I've been saying $4 buy cost into $7 profit. Thrift stores have increased over the years, mainly like this last year and a half. And my average cost of goods was $4.90. So one way to reduce that is to go to garage sales to do more of the buy sell trade type deals and the estate sales. Those are the ones where I had the lowest buy cost. Now a bunch of other people on the internet, they're going to the bins. That's a place they like to source. I feel like I'm going to get tetanus every time I walk into those types of places. So I'm not going to the bins. I'm going to the racks, but I need to start going to the garage sales more. And I plan to do that this year. I plan to take you guys with us. And when I say us, I mean, I'm going to have my son, Seth. I see my son getting me a lot of great deals whenever he has that one toy and I have a pile of clothes and I'm like, well, what about all this? Like, he's just a kid. Like, you know, try to pull on the heartstrings of some of those garage sale people so that I can, um, get better deals for my business. But yeah, we're going to show some of that moving forward. And then the last one is average profit per item. I've been saying $7 profit. It was $7.04 average profit per item. Now it's really low, but when you sell, you know, 9,000 items, you make pretty good money. So, and also I want to point out that I'm extremely proud of these numbers. These, um, I've, I never made $64,000 doing anything else. Like I, I never had, um, uh, the amount of time that I've had, I've never had the freedom that I've had, I've never had the um, happiness and joy in doing what I do uh, without eBay and without reselling. So we're going to continue on 2024. It's a new year. It's a clean slate. First day of sales was pretty bad because I took uh, you know Christmas, uh, I took New Year's Eve off. New Year's Day actually was really busy, so I wasn't able to do a lot of work. But we're going to have to ramp it up 
catch back up, probably hold steady with uh, the number of listings. That's usually 30 to 35. Sometimes it's a little less if you can't get it done, but um, hold steady there. And then we're going to grow this channel. You know, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers and uh, hopefully we can like double up by next year. Maybe we'll hit 20 by the end of 2024. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. I hope you guys enjoyed the income video. I hope you got some, uh, yeah, I, thought, I hope it was eye-opening. I hope I hope you guys kind of understand that uh, a lot of people do this differently. You know, I do this a lot different than other people, but um, it's about paying all your bills and being happy at the end of the day, and that's what I've been doing. So appreciate you guys watching. I uh, can't wait to see the comments on this one. I'm pretty excited. Make sure to like and subscribe as well if you are new to the channel because uh, I got a lot of info I can pass out to you guys, and, and I love seeing uh, and hearing your stories and, and helping people out. So it's been great. Uh, we're going to close the book on 2023 and we're going to move on to uh, the new year.